Welcome to Legally Speaking, a podcast from the Utah Attorney General's Office. Here, we will be discussing matters of policy and justice, cases that our office is taking on, hot topics in Utah and in the world. But of course, it will all be done legally speaking. We have our Assistant Chief of Investigations for the Utah Attorney General's Office joining me, Richard Pyatt, here on our podcast, Legally Speaking. We're talking today about the ongoing, formerly rising, but now ongoing spate of catalytic converter thefts. Correct. You would never think that someone's willing to steal something from underneath your car by cutting it off, Mm -hmm. but that's happening, and it's happening a lot. How often... Our law enforcement agencies across the state seeing this every day, every single day. There, there are reports of like a lot. Is this stuff. is this something that I need to be worried about as an automobile owner? I I would be. Um, I, I know me personally. I don't like the idea of parking any vehicle I own outside of my garage. Hmm. And and um, if it bugs me that much, it should bug anyone that owns a vehicle. So what's the what's the big deal with it? I know that they they know that they get the precious metals mm-hmm. out of it, but is there really that much in there that they can that's wor- makes it worth their time? Apparently so. Um, and, and I don't know the the makeup of the precious metals, but I know that. Um, a catalytic converter can hold three, four different kinds of precious metals uh, in one catalytic converter. And those catalytic converters are, are taken and then taken to you know, some kind of recycling facility. And, and uh, recycling facilities or, or even illegal fences, you know, things of that nature, they'll pay anywhere from you know, a couple hundred bucks to upwards of you know, $1,000 hmm. per catalytic converter. So how do they, do they just go down there with a saw and literally cut it out of your yes. car? Yes, they will, they will buy a, a saw blade, or actually more frequently, they will steal a saw, a saw blade from Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, wherever that sell them. <laughs> so they, they steal the saw blade and then the they steal the catalytic converter. And then they use those stolen saw blades to, to go underneath someone's car and, and uh, saw the catalytic converter off of the car. But if, if I was a scrap metal dealer and I had somebody bring this huge uh, pallet of catalytic converters in, I would think, huh. This doesn't seem like a legitimate uh, type business. Do, do, are you part? Are we partnering with with some of the scrap metal dealers mm-hmm. too to work with them on yes, catching so, these people? So I believe it was in 2021. Uh, we partnered with some of the the folks in the industry and uh, created a statute that that helps to curb this kind of activity. Um, now there's still the ability for. Uh, folks with business licenses dealing with automobiles, now they can bring in as many catalytic converters as, as they want. And perhaps that's that's an issue. So then maybe people would sell it to them and then they could just or, piggyback off or, it or, or they will they could potentially buy it from people that are stealing them yeah. and then they can legally take it over to a, a recycler and make a profit. And make a profit. Nice. So if uh, you're an automobile owner and you have to park your car outside mm-hmm. at night, is there a way to protect yourself? Can you can you make it a little bit more difficult for them to get access to your oh, catalytic converter? Hopefully it's a, in a well-lit area. Uh, that's that's you know probably one of the uh, the best deterrence uh, if you're going to park it outside of your garage. There are, there are devices that you can buy from uh, auto, uh, auto parts stores. Uh, they're like cages essentially that, that you can put underneath and, and protect your catalytic converter, which may very well be worth your, your time and effort and, and money. Uh, because if your catalytic converter is stolen, you have to replace the whole system. And that can be, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Well, and, and you know, not. Uh, I know I certainly don't, but I, I can't imagine a lot of people having a few thousand dollars that they're able to just dump into their catalytic converter <laughs> on their vehicle. So the, the catalytic, the so they get a couple hundred dollars out of it, but it costs you a couple grand. Correct. To correct to the problem, it. then. Okay. Yep. Um, I know that law enforcement agencies across the state are doing sting operations to try to catch these people, and we've engaged in that too, and, sure. and plan on it very soon. Uh, is it is it relatively uh, 
straightforward investigation in, in these kinds of situations or is a lot of planning involved or um, is it an effective law enforcement tool is what I'm asking. Right. Well, I mean, there's always a lot of planning involved in, in any investigation, especially a, a proactive investigation into catalytic converter theft because, you know, one, it's, it's hard to identify who's stealing them. And, and then if you're lucky to identify those people, uh, again, step two would be to identify who they're selling it to, whether they're bringing it to a fence or whether they're bringing it to a, you know, a, a bad actor recycler, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a, it is a very complex type of investigation uh, and one that takes a lot of time and resource. Mm -hmm. Now, is it, is it uh, worth the resource? Right. Well, ask the victims. Right. Um, I yeah, would I would say that, yes if you asked me. I would imagine me. that they yeah. would want us out there looking for people who are doing this because Absolutely. it is a it is a big problem and it is affecting a lot of and people. And it's infuriating if you Correct. go out and you start up your car and all of a sudden it sounds like a mm -hmm. speed demon or mm -hmm. sounds really mean. Right. You know. And then it's polluting our air on top right. of it. Right. Yeah. If if they drive it for <clears throat> for a while without fixing the problem. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the uh, update on the catalytic converter theft, Nate. This is a problem that's been a problem in Utah and nationwide, as a matter of fact, for a right. while. We're seeing an increase here. Law enforcement is handling it, but the best thing for you to do is protect yourself by parking in a well-lit area if you can. If you want to take the step to get a cage, mm -hmm. you could do that too. Thanks for joining us for Legally Speaking. I'm Richard Pyatt. See you next time.